Good evening, UC Bearcat fans. This is James Ernest and Mark Fightmaster of UC Bearcats on the Prowl, part of the Grueling Truth Radio Network. We're excited to talk all about the UC-UCF game. Mark, tell us a little bit about that game. Well, James, I mean, really no contest. I mean, well, I think the final was 56 to 21, uh, mm-hmm. I believe. And, 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 you know, I mean, there's what they were up 35, nothing. Uh, in the blink of an eye, it seemed. So, you know, it, and, and, you know, I mean, is what it is. We talked about this last week. Uh, you know, this UC had to go out and take care of business. Uh, and that's what they got to do the rest of the season. So to hold that number two ranking. Exactly. So you're yeah, right on that. I mean, it's one of those things where winning the game is not enough. They have to do a performance just like they did here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so – uh, the style points were enough for the AP, uh, weren't, or, or no, were enough for the coaches poll, but not quite enough for the AP, I think, or I forget which one were number three in James, uh, you know, um, that may be the coaches poll that were third in. Definitely. So, but you know, I mean, it, it is what it is, you know, we're the number two, number three ranked team in the country, depending on which poll you look at. So it was, uh, it was a big enough win, um, you know, and we'll, we'll talk about that going forward, maybe a little bit here, um, you know, as, as we look ahead, uh, they just have to go out and keep taking care of business. And they do, they got to rack up style points. Exactly. Cause otherwise Oklahoma will pass them, you know, for style mm-hmm. points and yeah, shoot, uh, Michigan's undefeated, Michigan state's undefeated. So, I mean, mm-hmm. there's other teams that there are to worry about, um, See anybody else that really comes to mind? Yeah, we're playing SMU. San Diego State's really nothing to worry about because they're not yeah. giving them enough credit. Um, so yeah, so there's a lot of good things going on. Obviously, that game when it comes to uh, UCF, a oh, big focus on the running. What do you think about that? Uh, they needed to. Um, you know, we uh, we know Desmond Ritter uh, can throw it. We know what he brings us. Uh, But you have to show every facet of the game. If you're going to be one of the best teams in the country, you have to be complete. And uh, the, the, how the show that Ford put on uh, running, you know, I I think uh, was obviously his best effort this year. May not have been yards wise. I'm not a hundred percent certain, but at least uh, by the eye test, it was the best they looked all year running the ball, and and they need to be able to do that because, you know, let's let's uh, well, let's say that, that what we hope happens happens, and UC ends up in that Final Four. Um, you're playing one of the top four teams in the country, uh, at least according to whoever picks them. You know, um, you're going to have to be able to if one facet of your game gets shut down, you have to be able to go to the other. And uh, I think uh, UC showed that they can do that. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, uh, Ford had almost 200 yards. He had a great performance. Mm -hmm. But then even after that, I mean, some of the backups, they also still did quite well running the ball. Yeah, and and and, and you know this, and I'm not telling you anything you you don't know. That's a product of the offensive line, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, especially with the running scheme that UC has, your offensive line has to dominate and has to do its job, and they have to be flexible, and, and so they did. Yeah, I was going to say, that is one of the uh, facets of the team that has really uh, uh, pleased me this year. I mean, it has really impressed me that how, because uh, originally at the start of the year, we, we had some concerns because we ended up losing those two really great guards to the NFL, yeah. so... There were, you know, mm-hmm. some issues, but uh, it sounds like the team yeah. has really done a remarkable, remarkable job. Yeah, you know, they're getting there. Uh, depth is going to have to be one of the strengths of this team as the season goes on, uh, you know, because there will be injuries. Uh, you know, I mean, every team is going to deal with it. So that's, uh, you know, getting some of those young guys in there to play, get some, some, uh, some experience, and, and you get to see some of that depth, you know, on the offensive line. So it's a good thing. Definitely. And then that great catch, uh, what did you think about Alex Pierce? Oh, uh, awesome. I mean, hands, you know, it's, it's great concentration. You know, he, he, he showed himself really well on that play. Exactly. I mean, he didn't have much separation, but he still managed to make such a big play. Yeah, you know, and uh, 
let, let's 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 look to Sundays. You know, look at Jamar Chase uh, from the Bengals. You know, he doesn't get a ton of separation all the time. Uh, this past weekend when they played Detroit, he made a nice catch uh, contested two weeks ago when they played Green Bay. Made a nice contested catch. You know, you have to be able to do that. You know, it's easy. Well, I, I, I put air quotes around easy. I know you guys can't see that, but it's easy to make the wide open catch. You know, what can you do when, when there's people on your face? Exactly. I know what you mean. When you say easy, you mean by the standards of that level Yep. player, like a Division One player or an NFL player. Mm-hmm. So to them, yes, it's easy. Obviously, we're not saying yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> it's never one yeah. of those situations where we're like, oh, yeah, that's easy. I can do it. Like, I almost said the dumbest thing because, you know, how uh, Ford had four touchdowns. I'm like, well, shoot, I could have ran for three of those. It was a one-yard, a two-yard, and a four-yard. Even if it's yeah. only one yard, it's still really difficult to do that. Yeah. Dude, James, I'm telling you, you could strap me onto the back of a golf cart going full speed and I wouldn't be able to get out as far as, you know, like Pierce or going to you know, Jamar Chase or any of those guys gets in, in time to make a catch, you know? So easy is a relative term. Exactly. So they had another great performance. Kobe Bryant made a big play. Yeah. And it was needed uh, because, you know, I, well, I think Mo Egger put on Twitter that it thwarted the comeback and he used quotes around comeback. But I'll tell you what, James, that was kind of a big moment. I mean, you know, UCF was, what was it, 35-14 maybe? Mm-hmm. And uh, and they were moving. I mean, they, they had found some success, and he picked it off and took it back, and that was uh, that shut the door, you know, that stopped any comeback attempt. So it was, it was a big play at a big time. Exactly. He's done a remarkable job. All the backfield has been doing remarkable this year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it's a strength. Definitely. It's a nice one to have. I mean, you got the good depth in the middle and the front and then the and the back they got, I mean, a couple of superstars that are gonna be drafted, so we got all mm-hmm. kinds of great things going on with uh U C sports. Yep. Yeah, it, it, it's a good day. I mean it's a good year, uh, to be a, a Bearcats fan. Definitely. So what are your thoughts about this Saturday at Navy? Uh dude, what is Navy O and five? One and or five. One and four. One and five. Yeah. Um, it shouldn't be much of anything. You know, I mean, Navy will test your discipline on defense. And we've talked about this every year that UC has played Navy. You know, you get that triple option. You got your keys. You know, what's the tackle going to do when he's unblocked? What's the end going to do when he's unblocked? Do they teach him? And they do their job. Uh, you know, I don't see anything in this for UC. Um I think this should be kind of a, kind of an easy game for him. Uh, I hope it is, you know. So uh, that's you know is what it is. I, they'll they'll put up. You see, will put. I mean, it depends on if Navy can slow the game down. But I, I see the Bearcats putting up another forty. Yeah, 50 I agree points. with you. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, oh, that, yeah. Uh, yeah speaking of that, back to back games of fifty points or more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and James, that goes back to the style points. And, uh, you know, uh, last – maybe it was two weeks ago we talked about this after uh, the game, and, and you were like, you know, let's not worry about the style points. Let's enjoy this. But then uh, last week when we had Greg on, um, he brought up the fact that the national media likes to look past UC. Um, and I'm going to bring up something that just frustrated the hell out of me in the game on Saturday. One of the first things they put up on ESPN is the UC strength of schedule. Ooh. And – and it's 95th. Oh, and, man. yeah, actually, that, that, therein lies our problem, James. You know, you were looking at teams that that could or couldn't pop up, and I think you were looking at undefeated teams. Um, yeah. What I, worry, what I worry about is both Alabama and Ohio State um, and Oklahoma, those three teams, because they have just a much tougher strength of schedule. You know, I think you see – maybe has one or two games against winning records left. Um, so, you know, they're going to have to, they're going to have to keep putting up those 50 point games. They're going to have, they cannot have an off day. Um, so that's great that they've had two. Now we got to make it three 50 point games. Exactly. Yeah. I was going to say the only game that really is getting any respect is the SMU game is the only one where people are all, yeah. 
it could be a game. Where everything yeah. else, they need to blow them away. And even the SMU game would be nice if they could uh, do a dominant performance. Yeah, and, and, and then what we have to hope is that we can get them again, possibly, in the championship game. That being and us being their only loss. Uh, see, like this weekend is a scenario that makes me a little bit nervous, James, because Ohio State plays Indiana. And, uh, you know, let's see what Ohio State does to Indiana compared to what UC did to Indiana. And it's, you know, uh, it's unfair comparisons in my eye. Okay. Yeah. It's unfair because the season's a little bit further along, you know, um, but the national voters will look at that, you know. So, um, you see, has to just keep going out and taking care of business, and uh, you know it, it may be a bit graphic, but the uh, the old saying I remember is, when you have your foot on somebody's throat, you can't let up; you got to push down. You know, exactly. and uh, that's what they've got to do every game from here on out. So it sounds like football is going the right way, the way we wanted to. Now, what about basketball? Any thoughts on uh, the upcoming season there? You know, James, I'm excited for it. Um, you know, I, I want to see what the, what the new coach does. Uh, you know, he's tried to bring in a, uh, a sense of, uh, you know, team and tradition. You know, um, hopefully in two, three years, we can look back on, on Coach as uh, Coach, the way we look at Coach Fickle. You know, came in after the, uh, the Tuberville disaster. And, and rebuilt, and now we have kind of a mirror here where uh, where the new, new guy is going to be coming in after Coach Brannon, uh, and and we'll see what happens. So, but I'm excited. I ended up getting an email the other day that said I think they had only like 300 season tickets left. For you know, um, yeah, the coach has breathed a little new life in. Um, you know, he. Uh, I remember his press conference, James. He was excited. He he had emotion. You know, he talked about the tradition of Cincinnati and how he reached out to the old players and how he talked to them. And I think it's going to be a good thing. I know maybe, you know, uh, Corey Blunt wasn't thrilled at first. Nick Van Exel wasn't thrilled at first or Terry Nelson even. But they all said, let's give this guy a chance now after he talked to them. So he won them over. So let's, let's let him do the same with us. I think it's going to be an, an exciting season. Yeah, because, I mean, I, just some of the ideals that they had, they're like, well, if it's not a former UC guy, we don't want him. And that, that just seemed ridiculous. Yeah, you know, I agree. I, I agree. You know, um, I mean, well, I'm, if you want to look at it in – I always kind of thought of Brandon as a Cincinnati guy, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he he was in Northern Kentucky. He grew up in here, here, you know. So, what good is it going to do us to bring another Cincinnati guy in? You know, mm-hmm. I mean, it didn't end well for uh, for Brandon. So let's let's see what happens. Right. You know, I mean, what Wes Miller is new. He's he's got a great coaching pedigree. If UC hadn't hired him, he was going somewhere else big. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's a good move, and I think everybody's on board now. So we'll see. Definitely. So it sounds like it's going to be another great week of UC football. We're excited <laughs> about uh, this Saturday the 23rd. It's going to be on ESPN2 at noon. <laughs> so definitely uh, worth checking out. And then also, speaking about checking things out, there's a bunch of other great shows on the Grueling Truth Radio Network. We talk everything from NFL, college, baseball, basketball, boxing, wrestling, you name it. There's such a wide variety of things that we cover on the uh, UC Bear, or on the uh, Grueling Truth. So definitely feel free to check those out. Mark, any final thoughts? No, James, you're right, though. we got a ton of great shows, and, and you, you guys need to listen to them. They're really good. And maybe one of these days I'll even be on that wrestling podcast. Who knows? So, uh, nice. But, you know, it's, it's – uh, no, nah, it, hey, we appreciate you listening and taking the time, guys. And, uh, you know, uh, let, let's get a big win for the Cats this weekend, and we'll, we'll get back together next week. Sounds great. It's been James Ernest and Mark Fightmaster for the UC Bearcats on the Prowl. Thank you for joining us.